Welcome to the Worst of the Riot podcast and today's episode of the show. One thing that got people riled up, we're talking about how more and more people are canceling their streaming subscriptions. We try to go through the reasons for why and uh, a little bit of how streaming services can fix it. We also talk theories around the popularity of Stanley Cups and why people are going crazy for the newest edition. And we talk about trouble potentially coming to Walmart's self-checkouts. Why we're trying to warn you to make sure you don't make some big mistakes with that. And with gambling. That actually might go hand in hand. Good show today. Enjoy. Catch you next time. You won't hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The Worst of the Riot. Radio U. You know, uh, winter storm's coming. What's that mean? What do you mean? It's a, it's a, it's a storm. It's a winter storm. It's For like the whole, the whole country, the whole world? A lot of the country is going to get some of this winter storm. I don't know how wintry it will be for everybody, but I mean, it looks like, looks like what I've seen here. The storm's going to develop in the south, and the jet stream is going to carry it up the eastern seaboard, right up to uh, the big major cities on the East Coast uh, tonight and into much of tomorrow and maybe even Sunday a little bit. So maybe Monday we don't come in. Maybe, if we're lucky. People are starting to murmur. That's uh, So let me ask you my first question, and that is, that is, growing up in the Midwest, how many inches of snow it has to be expected before you consider it a concern? I think if school and everything's not getting canceled, yeah. if people aren't going into work, that's when it, it becomes a concern. So that me. means any any weekend snowstorm doesn't count. Does not count. Well, so that, this weekend, unfortunately, yeah. since it's not during work hours, uh-huh. I am how, not worried about it. How many, okay, this might even be a better question than how many inches of snow you think it would have to be to stop you from like going out on a Saturday night? Mm, good question. Three? Three. That's it? Probably three. I thought you might be, uh, as a Midwesterner, a little hardier. Mm, if it's if it's snowing hard yeah. and it's cold outside, I don't know that I want to go deal with that. The whole driving portion. After I mm. crashed my car a couple of years ago in the radio, yeah. you parking lot coming into work on a day that was, I mean, a snowstorm. <laughs> that was, that was you know what that was that was just ice. Oh yeah, that it, was was just like, like, it was like remember because we all drove in, we all were completely fine driving here, and then there was the the thinnest of ice layers on the radio U parking lot and Nikki and I although we both also slipped and slided into the parking lot we didn't hit anything they went uh, the other way I, I made yeah. a, a different turn than them in the parking lot yeah uh, they turned away from the tree you've still got I this. turned towards the tree and my truck is still not fixed you still you still got the scars to prove it uh I, I three actually is a good answer though because I was thinking four and I think Every time, especially like if it hasn't, when it's the first snow of the year, you forget how li- how little snow actually is. How do I put this? Uh, you know, it's not like I talk for a living or anything. How, like you see a, a little bit of snow on the ground and you're like, well, that must be an inch. It's not. Like it's way less. So it actually takes way less inches of snow, I think, to wreak havoc. Then you think in your mind, you're thinking in your mind, like, well, if there's not a foot of snow, uh, if you've grown up with snow, but then you see the first snow of the year, it's way, uh, it's way bigger. Um, I think we should do this. I think I've got some winter storm preparedness tips because people might have forgotten what to do since the last winter storm. They say there hasn't been a storm like this on the East Coast in two years. So maybe, uh, maybe people need some, some little helping hands and we can get to those coming up next. Do yourself a favor and follow The Riot on Instagram at Radio U Riot. Much of the country this weekend, so we've got the tips you need to make sure you're ready when you want to run out and panic buy some stuff this afternoon. Here's what you got to look for. First of all, high protein and non-perishable foods. And this is stuff you want to keep you want to have in your house, of course. But this How is, long are we going to be in the what? Listen. Are we talking about? Are we important. getting canned goods? People, you've seen the videos where people get like, uh, they crash the car, they get it like abandoned out in because yes. everybody's crashed and there's no, the roads are slick. And so AAA can't come help. And so this, I think it's important to have at home, but even more so 
You have your high protein and non-perishable foods. We're getting snowed in apparently in this your weekend. Car. You need some energy bars just in case uh, you get in a traffic jam. Is uh, step number one. Step number two. I would put that farther down the list. Don't worry about that one yet. Step number two for home use: canned goods. Oh my goodness! You gotta gracious. have some canned food. This is why it's good what? that I bought some chunky soup three years ago that I still haven't eaten. I've never gotten around to it. It is going to come in handy if I ever get snowed in. Because they say, remember, the power may go out. So you want stuff that you can easily, more easily eat. It doesn't have to be refrigerated, things of that It nature. makes sense. That way you can just pop open that cold corn or yeah. cold green beans. Mm -hmm. And that's just yummy. And they're technically fine. That is they don't yummy. have to be uh, reheated. Uh, obviously, this is, uh, uh, you know what? Is any of this obvious, though? We got to just lay it all out. Water. You got to have water. Uh, that means bottled water, which, you know, shouldn't you always have that anyways at this point? Because uh, you got to stay hydrated. Um, <laughs> they say make sure you have plastic bags on hand and containers uh, for, for you to wrap your perishable foods. They're really nailing these perishable foods. They, yeah, you don't want, well, you don't want anything to go bad what, during a snowstorm. Yeah, because you think about it, like, you don't want to starve to death. That's no. the, but right? Yeah, right. You don't Got want to start. Um, I like this. That's their plot. Paper, paper plates, cups, and disposable utensils. Because if your power's out and you don't have running water, then you can't do dishes, can you? You can't. This is helpful. That Actually, I keep this uh, philosophy all year round that you never know when your power can go out. So I just always use paper plates to be safe. Easier to just throw away. Exactly. Um... And, uh, well, uh, they say have an emergency kit. I think that's, that. you know, a lot of people don't have, you know, the emergency kit, the first aid kit on hand. I don't even know if I have Band-Aids at home right now, to be honest with you. So if I were to cut myself in a snowstorm, it could be, that could be it for me. You know, and, and you could also, this is what I would say if we're doing tips. Yeah. I would say the most important tip might be. Maybe you forego all these items, save up all the money you would spend on these. Yeah. Buy a generator. That's smart, too. And that's have your generator ready. Uh -huh. I would say if you haven't used your generator in a while, make sure you've got gas. Yes. That way your generator is ready to roll. Mm -hmm. And if you have a generator, then you're fine. Yeah. But, you know, the, the one thing about generators, though, is they cost money, right? They cost money. More money than all those other things. And then when you buy one and you don't use it for five years, you feel pretty dumb. Exactly. Yeah. We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio U. We have a Florida man who is suing Dunkin' Donuts for bodily injury and psychological damages due to what unfolded in a uh, Dunkin' Donuts bathroom. Evidently... Uh, after stopping in at a Dunkin' Donuts, you needing to use the facilities somehow or another, uh, he ended up covered with debris, including human feces and urine. The claims are the toilet suddenly erupted while he was still in the restroom. I, quite frankly, don't want to read further to find out whether he was sitting on it whether he flushed while he was sitting on it or whether it was just completely spontaneous, whether he wasn't sitting on it when this occurred and somehow the, the spray. I don't want to, you know, use your imagination on all of that. Nevertheless, he claims he was covered with debris, uh, you know, toilet debris. And I think this is a, this is a, a tough mark, even though I feel like it's the, it's, it's the natural thing to do. But when he went out covered in, but it's covered in, and started asking the employees for help. They're like, they admitted, they're like, oh yeah, we've had issues with this toilet before. What? In a court case, that's that's not gonna help you. So where do we stand here? I mean, I think it's pretty clear that I believe he deserves something. He wants 50K. That doesn't seem aggressive. Yeah. That doesn't seem over the top when it's when we're talking Dunkin' Donuts here. And when I see the story, what he went through, an exploding toilet, like, mm -hmm. yeah, $50,000 seems seems fair to me. 
he you know, sometimes with these lawsuits, you can tell just by how much the person is asking for. If, if it's he, ridiculous or not. Yeah. And I don't know that $50,000 is ridiculous when he claims that he needed mental health care and counseling as a direct result of the trauma. You think you would need? It's hard to put yourself in those shoes. But if, if a toilet erupted on you, do you think you would need mental health care and counseling? I think that the claim would be any time that I go into a bathroom, I'm afraid that it's going to explode. Yeah, that that does make a good case. Like, and it? imagine if this had happened to you before. Mm-hmm. If you sat down on the toilet the next time, and last Man. time it exploded and no, it hurt a little. Right. You're right. Like that could be a little bit scarring. I can see where he's coming from here, and just the poop on him. Come on, that alone is worth fifty k. Yeah, yeah, and you know what is true too. That uh, whether you or not you truly felt you needed mental health care and counseling after this incident, you'd take it up if you thought you would, you know what I mean? If you thought oh, you could yeah. win a court case to get it paid for. Because who doesn't want mental health care and counseling, no matter what you've been through? Uh, it sounds like sounds like he's got a pretty good case here. $50,000 seems reasonable. Could you ever set foot in a Dunkin' Donuts again? See, I think maybe he should say $50,000... And free donuts for a year. Yeah. For a year, I was going to say for life. Oh, for life's a little crazy, all right? Yeah. You got a little poop on you, and you're not going <laughs> to lose a leg. Disinformation. Mispronunciations. Bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is The Riot on Radio U. Buy now, pay later. It's just uh, it's a practice that is expanding more and more throughout the United States where you probably have seen uh, when you've done online shopping, the little, uh, the little symbols that are like, pay $50 in six installments with a firm or with zip or with uh, Klarna. Klarna was a big one. They did a lot of commercials. Well, now it's branching out. Not only when you're doing online shopping, could you buy now, pay later. But coming to Walmart self-checkouts, you can buy now, pay later, thanks to their new uh, partnership with a firm. They've expanded their partnership, so now you can walk up to a Walmart self-checkout and say, I don't want to pay all three hundo right up front. Let me split this into some payments, and they'll do it for you. This is dangerous. It's dangerous, right? Some of these, in fact, I don't know, all of them, perhaps... Uh, don't charge, they charge like, uh, like a $2 fee or something like that for the, for, for using it straight up. But, uh, other than that, you're not paying any more if you actually make your payments on time. But if you don't make your payments on time, watch out, buddy. It's trouble. I think in my mind, if you're using buy now, pay later at Walmart, uh, uh-huh. That's a horrible idea. Why do you say that? Because Versus if you where can't, else? Where, where would it be a better idea? If you're anywhere. Uh, well, you, you think about Walmart just sounds wild anyway for doing this. But if you think about like, if you're doing this for like a car, you do a car in payments. Yeah. That makes sense. A car is a large pur- purchase. Mm-hmm. Most people can't buy a car straight up. Yeah. There's not many things that you would buy at Walmart that you couldn't just buy straight up. So why aren't you paying for the whole thing? Well, well, you know what I hear? I hear your privilege showing. Oh, is that so? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, look at Mr. Big Shot. He can afford $150. I can afford afford my groceries if I go go to Walmart. And if you can't, if you're buying something that is at Walmart that you don't want to pay for Uh up front because then it's just unnecessary. What is a need at Walmart that you can't pay for up front? I'm trying to think. Obviously, it's more... I mean, there are bigger ticket items you could buy at Walmart, but, I mean, you're right. It's not even, like... They don't even really sell, like, appliances there, right? Unless you're getting, like, a TV. A TV. You're not buying a... Do they sell lawnmowers? At Walmart? Yeah. Maybe they do. I'm sure someone was ex and saying they do. I'm sure... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, besides all, you know, the concerns that just... Uh, you can say you're responsible. We all say that. And in technicality, this can be, I think, if used correctly, it can be a tool in your toolbox if you, uh, it can help you actually, I think, again, if you're very responsible, this can help you save money. 
because it's harder to save money if you have to spend $300 all at once when you don't have $300 versus it's something you do kind of need. And so you spread it out a little bit. I mean, that's what, again, responsible use of like credit cards is for. However, it also just sounds like a pain because you can't just walk up, even though either way would suck, but you can't just walk up to the self checkout and go, "Eh, I don't really want to pay $300 today. Let me do the affirm thing. You have to apply for approval online first, and then they give you a barcode on your phone, and then you scan that. So it's not even like something in the moment that you can do, which, which though probably keeps it safer, but at the same time, yeah. Uh, at the same time, it's not exactly convenient, uh, either. Why pay $300 now when you can procrastinate and possibly uh-huh. play 500 instead? Yeah, that's right. Be careful. Tread lightly is all we're saying. There's never been a can of worms they didn't open. The Riot Radio U. It is The Riot on Radio U, 8772-RADIO-U. You. Coming up here in about 15 minutes, Nikki will join the show. I've got a confession I need to make to her, and I need some of her advice. And so uh, we'll chat with her here coming up in a few minutes. But first, surely you've seen all the videos going around of the people making fools of themselves trying to get the special Valentine's Day Stanley Cups at Target. Have you seen this? I have seen this. It's insane. People are, uh, you know, jumping over one another. It's like, it's, like, it's like Black Friday used to be, but it's for, for cups. Isaiah, do you understand it? I don't understand it, but I have a theory on why at least some people might be making their way to grab these on the shelves. Okay. I want to hear your theory. Because I, because honestly, I, I don't even have a theory. I don't understand <laughs> it. I'm, I'm reading here. It's like, whoa, they've, you know, leveraged their uh, ability to collab with other brands or whatever. Uh, so? So do lots of things. I don't know. So explain it to me. Let me give you the rundown. It's not about the cup. Uh-huh. Hudson. It's not about this great, amazing cup. Yeah. How amazing it is. Is it amazing? I don't know that it is amazing. I think it's just an average cup. Mm -hmm. But it's the name on the cup, and it's the thought of the cup that really matters. I see a group (laughs) here of people grabbing not one cup, but two. Yep. Why would you need two of these? You get one for yourself. If they're so indestructible and so amazing, yeah, you just you grab one. But I think it's so they can resell them. They can resell them. Some people are reselling. Yeah. And then I am seeing... Some guys in there grabbing these cups, even though this does seem like this is kind of a lady thing. Yeah. Ladies love the cups for some reason. But I see some guys getting in there grabbing oon cup. One very cup. Uh Uh-huh. Why would they need a cup? You might be wondering. For a gift. Yeah. Make their girlfriend. For their wife. For their girlfriend. For their girlfriend. And then when you give that to your girlfriend slash wife as a present, because they they didn't want to go to the store and maybe be involved in the craziness of a lot of these resellers here. Yeah. And they want to be able to get their hands on this cup too, but maybe they don't want it that bad. When you show up with this very cup, uh huh, that's a big deal. Whatever you were just in trouble for, uh-huh. no longer in trouble for. And so those guys either were completely unsuspecting. They knew the Stanley Cup was coming out, the, the new collab, and they're like, uh, well, my, you know, whoever will like this, I'll get it for them. Or they were in in big trouble in the dog yeah, house we like, like to is, say this is all this is this is the only way to smooth things over so if you find yourself maybe you've been a bad boy as of late maybe uh, you are in the dog house how do you get out of it you grab yourself the valentine's day stanley cup yeah everything is a fix valentine's day is is saved i i'm looking you know i guess this is no surprise people collect them so they're just putting together like they just want to have all, as many different ones as they can, which, uh, you know, sometimes collections, people get a little out of hand for them. But uh, then again, I feel like it's pretty rare that you start like attacking people and stealing stuff for a collection. Well, but. it just depends on, the, on what it is. You know, if it's limited availability and you're trying to go to the store, sometimes it gets a little dicey in there. I'll say it's it sure does. Well, this is uh, one trend. I'm okay with not being a part of, you know, the only Stanley cup that matters to me is the hockey one. It's 808 BZ. It's the high riot. 
add a little riot to your Instagram feed. Follow at Radio U Official. The Riot. Radio U. It is the riots on Radio U eight seven seven two Radio U. Find us on Instagram at Radio U Riot. Nikki is here. Good morning, yes. Nikki. Yes. Good morning, guys. How are you? Happy Friday. Happy, Happy Friday. Friday. Yes. Oh, it feels good, Nikki. I have an update for you. I have a confession, actually. A confession? All right, let me hear it. Yeah, I've got something that I've recently started doing that in the past I'm sure I made fun of you for doing. And uh, so I just want to get it off my chest and let you know that I have started getting the grocery pickup thing where they just bring it out to your trunk. Did you? Okay, I was wondering. I thought, I wonder what you're going to say. At first, I thought maybe uh, you started walking around in the studio, like pacing. No. <laughs> That's no, crazy cause talk. I, yeah. Because I don't not know a if lunatic. you listeners <laughs> need to know, but Hudson will make fun of anything. <laughs> anyone does. So Okay, so now you're doing pickup, and you, you've you been making fun of me for that when I started it? Yeah. Uh, and I did want to ask you about it, though. Do you ever stop feeling like part of the bourgeoisie when you do this or does that feeling ever go away or I always um I mean any anyone can do it so I feel more okay I joined Walmart plus believe it or not like six months ago okay and (laughs) I do feel like real excessive when you know I'll do like I'll have a delivery pick like sent to me yeah and sometimes they're like oh we were missing an item so we'll we'll send it to you the next day But it's literally not like delivering it from like UPS. They'll just have a worker bring it over to your house. What? And that (laughs) that makes me feel like that's a bit much. You know, like I could have gone and got it at that point. Yes. Uh, But when you go and do like a pickup delivery, that's so normal now. You shouldn't feel bougie for that. It it feels normal. You think the feeling will go away. Eventually I'll stop feeling like I am above. Abusing things. Yeah, the hoi polloi. (laughs) Uh, Because I always saw myself, I've always seen myself as a common man, as a member of the working class. I don't walk her in. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't get my hands dirty, but still, I feel like, uh, you know, like I'm a regular old plowman. And then when I'm doing things like making other people get my groceries for me, mm. it makes me feel like a little bit of an aristocrat. No, I well, you need to do it more. But I guess the other question is, what store are you doing pickup at now? Uh, Whole Foods. Because yeah. <laughs> then, yeah, that's bougie. If that's what you're doing. Now, where are you picking up at? No, it's uh, it's it's just Kroger's, just the Kroger's. Kroger. Yeah, okay. old Kroger. I bet it makes the people who did feel fancy doing it before. Now that they hear you're doing it, they feel way less fancy. That, like, whoa, if Hudson's doing it, that, that is probably true. But I'm also here's what's tough about it. It was one thing. Like I've done it probably like three, four times now. And the first time, obviously, I felt bad. But then again, I was getting the whole reason we did it was a discount. So, yeah. uh, what's the big deal? Um, and then I've done it a couple times, but the most recent time I did it, I don't know if this makes me feel better or worse. Cause I saw one other person in one of the pickup parking places and they didn't just sit in their car and let the, let the worker load up into the trunk. They got out of their car, but not to help. To instruct oh, to the worker monitor? to no. monitor them and instruct oh. them to tie up all of the bags. Were they filing That's their nails worse. while doing that or no? <laughs> that is she was worse. actually looking Don't at her phone that. the whole time. <laughs> you just sit in your car and just you open up the hatch or the door yeah. or whatever. And I don't think you're supposed to get out. Like, that's kind of weird. Yeah, I, I was harshly judging that lady for standing there. And like, you could see her do it the, kind of like the finger wag. Like, oh, no, no. Don't put that in there. The milk, you need to back that up and tie oh, it up, weird. please. Yeah, you could tell. She no, was. that's no. the worst. Yeah. Well, just and then I was like that, but I'm not Hudson. that far from that. <laughs> yeah, well, you it's not. So. I mean, the other, th- I do a lot of pickup also at Aldi, which it's like, <laughs> it's they use Instacart. So basically you're paying someone just to put all the stuff and then you go mm-hmm. pull up. And I remember the one Aldi near me is just awful. They will, when you do the app to tell them that you're there, they'll never come out with your food. And eventually the app will say, no one's available. You need to go in and get it. <laughs> and I remember checking myself being like, let's not have an attitude. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> they at least got your food for you. So just go in and grab your bags. You guys and made me walk all the way in here. Yeah. Yeah. Grab my bags uh-huh. and load my own vehicle. 
Well, so that's you just, just have to keep yourself humble on that side. Well, that I mean, you could also look at the positive, and that would be 20 less steps you'd have to take around the studio. That so. is the truth. That's true. <laughs> but it is really good for your budget. Like, if you're trying to not waste money on a lot that of stuff. That is true. I think that's kind of why I love it. It's fantastic because you're not just going and buying everything that you see at the store because you're just like, oh, that looks yummy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and instead, you're just getting what you actually need to get. So it is good on yeah. that side of things. I, I was thinking that, too, because you know I love going in Kroger and just milling around. Yeah, and I love to dilly-dally. <laughs> oh, I go in there a little bit hungry, and all of a sudden, the things on, like, the clearance bread and snacks yeah. and oh, oh, everything the rack looks so of, good. Uh, of, uh, Stuff they're about to throw away, the Cupcakes. baked goods. Oh, yeah. my goodness. There's always pies there. It's a killer for mm-hmm. me. Yeah. So it is it is smarter to just have someone shop it for you, but don't get out of the car and don't uh, don't hover if they're they're putting the stuff yeah. in. <laughs> that lady didn't even tip either. That was the worst part. Uh-huh. Well, how do you know the tipping's online? Oh, mine says you're not allowed to tip them. Oh. Likely story. It says you're not Likely supposed to tip them. Story. And I've seen other people there. They've never tipped. But I thought that lady at least getting out of her car. And that was my first thought. I was like, oh, she's going to get out and tip. I saw her holding something. She wasn't holding money. True. She was holding her phone. She's, and she wasn't she's tipping. She's just holding her Shame. anger. Yeah. Shame on you. Shame. Amberlynn, <laughs> it's the riot. Hudson is the maple syrup. And Isaiah is the power protein flapjack. This is the riot on Radio U. Now, with the NFL playoffs on the horizon, the college football championship, March Madness, and more coming up here down the road in just uh, uh, over the course of the next weeks and months, it all seems very exciting. But don't forget, they could also bring with it gambling addiction. Sorry to say it, but now that gambling, sports gambling, is now legal in 36 states, Experts from Rutgers University are warning that particularly for young men, gambling addiction, uh, becoming a problem gambler is gambler is more and more likely thanks to just how easy it is to get started and then how hard it can be to stop. It is quite a wild door that's been opened here in the past like couple years with sports gambling, especially because it's on your phone. It's so accessible. That's why they think it's uh, it, it 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 is so so much of an issue because anybody can do it from anywhere at just any about time. At this point, yeah. There's always a sport going on. There's uh-huh. always something. It's not like you're. It's almost like you're sitting down at the slot machine, just sitting there pressing. Yeah, <laughs> hoping well, that at some point you're gonna get something right. Well, the, what? Uh, here's here's a great quote from Leah Nauer. She's the director of the Center for Gambling Studies at Rutgers University. She says, you can be gambling away your house and your mobile phone sitting at the dinner table and not a single person will know until the devastation of your whole family is complete, which is pretty, that's a pretty holy aggressive dire, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that is the extreme case that can be a reality and that is for many people because yeah, if you have to go to a casino and sit at a slot machine or a blackjack table uh, to gamble and that's how you do it then people are going to notice you're missing. They're going to know where you are. They're going to know, like, it's going to be the the red flags will be flying to other people in your life that might be able to help you out. If you're a problem sports better on your phone, then it's just so easy for a bunch of money to slip away so quickly and for nobody to know until it's really too late. Little sneaky, yeah, sneak, sneak. Keep that all to yourself. Your wife has no idea. I mean, she's going to know if you're hanging out at the... At the casino every day. She's Uh not going to know when you're just deposit, deposit, deposit in the FanDuel, DraftKings, whatever it may be. And all of a sudden, you're making all these bets and losing all this money in just a snap of the fingers in your own living room. Yeah. So, uh, in other words, uh, very publicly share your bets with everybody so they know. Exactly. That's the the key. Make sure you post it on your Instagram story. Yeah. And you know what? It's going to stink because you're going to get it wrong. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose money and you're going to be embarrassed. But. Accountability. You need that public embarrassment. That's what you need. No, it is true. Uh, And, you know, it's always tough to be somebody who just sits here and so many people have fun with it. And then us to tell you, well, don't do it. But at the same time, all of these, uh, these apps, they all have limits that you're able to set in there and stuff. And obviously those limits are also very easy to change when you decide that, uh, that you're, you know what, maybe I, you know, I lost that one, but let me double down. I'll win it back. That's, that's when it gets dangerous. Starting to think I'll win it back because, uh, 
no matter what you're betting on, that's really not how it works. Yeah, it's a roll of the dice. It's always a roll of the dice. So Mm -hmm. when it comes to stuff like this, it's all, you know, it can be fun and like little bits or whatever. But all of a sudden, if it starts getting out of hand, it's not so much fun when you lose all your money. And you know what's even worse is when you have to go to your wife and say, I lost all my money. Yeah. That's when it really, uh, really hits the rock bottom. Take it from Isaiah. (laughs) Oh, thank goodness I'm not. You don't always have to agree with Isaiah to always disagree with Hudson. The Riot. Radio U. Big moment of love last night on TV. I don't know if you saw the Golden Bachelor getting married. The Golden Wedding, they called it, live on ABC. Gary Turner and Teresa Nist tied the knot for all to see after uh, meeting and falling in love and getting engaged on the Golden Bachelor TV show, which aired uh, this fall on ABC. I've seen some of the some of the highlights, very sweet, The Golden Bachelor. Yeah, I was listening to some of the audio this morning, and it seemed like uh, what, a, what a great little time it was. One of the weirder parts for me, uh-huh. one of the other contestants married them together. Oh, that's, yeah, I saw that too. That is insane. That's a crazy thing. But I wonder how much they offered her to do that. It was Susan. Susan. If you guys watched. The Golden Bachelor was the one that ended up marrying them. They didn't. Um, the For the Golden Bachelor, I just wonder this. If you got the opportunity to get married on TV, would you do it? On TV? No. If you were, you know, you were already engaged anyways, and a television executive comes to you and says, hey, we'll broadcast your wedding on the TV. And, no chance. You wouldn't chance. take that? You wouldn't take it? No, because I think... For most people, like it would just not be interesting. It wouldn't be good TV. But that's not your problem. You know, I really want my my wedding out there for everyone to see. There's going to be a lot of things that happen to my wedding. Yeah. Specifically me on the dance floor that I don't want to be broadcast uh, for everyone to see. But that's what everybody wants to see. That's what make, it makes it so compelling. So much cringe and out you're, there. Uh, you're a star, you know? So no wonder somebody would, would come to you and propose the idea of air. What if we could air it here on Radio U? Do you don't think that would be like one of the biggest moments of Radio U history? If we aired if we a wedding. live broadcast your wedding. No, over the radio? Yeah. That would be horrible. We've we've played worse things. See, that's think, your thoughts. I think uh, how many times has a radio has a wedding been broadcast on the radio? Not many. Probably zero. It'd be, it'd I'm gonna historic. go with zero. It'd be historic. I think it would be I think it would be yeah, I mean and when you think about all the love and support that Radio U listeners have shown you, wouldn't it just be right? You can't physically invite them all to your wedding. Of course, that's, that would be ridiculous. But to include them in a way that uh, they could join along and celebrate your love whenever you get married, that'd be beautiful. So the Golden Bachelor gets married. Yeah. And it is kind of wild, too, in the Bachelor way, because usually they don't end up getting married. No, it's it's very rare, right? What has that been? Three, four? It's not very in many. In all of the bachelors and bachelorettes. And you might think as well, I mean, usually it doesn't happen. And for them to get engaged and then get married so quickly, you might be wondering, they wasted no time. But it makes sense. Uh-huh. Because it's the Golden Bachelor. They don't have much time left. <laughs> you said it, not me. So you got you to make it a little bit quicker that way. You can't be messing around. Uh-huh. When people go There's on The no... Bachelor, Bachelorette, and this is why I think The Golden Bachelor is a better setup, is because they're actually trying to find someone, right? Yeah. They're actually trying to get married, and they know that there may not be forever left. But when you're 25, 30, and you go on The Bachelor, Bachelorette, uh-huh. it feels like you have unlimited time to find somebody. The stakes are lower. Way lower. Yeah. So if you don't actually find somebody or you don't actually get married... The show, kind of a fraud. Yeah. And I watch it. Jerry, uh, 72 years old, no time to waste for like him. If he, didn't, if he didn't get married now, uh-huh. I mean, once he get if married. If he went through 25 women in the span of a couple months and he couldn't find his wife then. And they're all serious. Like, they're, yeah, all, trying they, to get, they're all trying to get married. Yeah. And you couldn't find it then, then, then Jerry this is his very, last chance. Very likely his last chance. All right. So they got married well, in Palm Springs. I love Palm Springs. <laughs> During a live televised special that aired last night on ABC. Congratulations. I'm sure you can watch the replay on Hulu if you really want to. 
The only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. If I had to ask you, what do you think the odds are that artificial intelligence causes an extinction of the human race? What would you put those odds at? Low. They got to be low. Low? You got to think it's like 1%, huh? That low? I'd say it's that low. I'll tell you that uh, a survey of over almost 3,000 scientists, experts, uh, who had published peer-reviewed AI studies found that they would put the percentage chance uh, on average around 5%. That, 5%? Yeah. There's a 1 in 20 chance, according to AI experts, that artificial intelligence will cause the human race to go extinct one day. See, that seems a little high. 5%. Does that seem a little dire? What if you put it this way? There's many of things I would choose before it. Um, they said, if, out of this survey, 68% of researchers think that Good outcomes from AI are more likely than bad. However, about half of the people they surveyed gave a non-zero percent chance of human extinction due to AI. So that means ha- about half of them say there's a zero percent chance, so we don't even have to worry. I, f- I feel like that's, that's being undersold here. I think that's actually, that sounds good. Although these are the AI, like if you're an AI expert, don't you think you're more likely to, to feel that be pro AI? AI? Yeah, to be pro AI. You would think so. Mm-hmm. How do we know that some of these AI experts aren't AI themselves? Who would be a better expert on AI than AI? It's a lot of AI. It sure is. Yeah, I would say there's many things I would choose before it that I'd be more worried about. Yeah. Nuclear but, war. But do you worry about that more in the short term? Like, you know... I would say in the next year, it's more likely that nuclear war ends the human race. Would you put, then we got, we can go down a list of things. Yeah. What about like a pandemic? Uh, based off of the last one, I'm going to say we seem to have, uh, have that pretty te- well taken care of. <laughs> what did you say? How about something that we oh, are... no, Based off of our behavior in the previous one, if, if another worst one comes along. I feel like it's going to be the boy who cried wolf situation. So. We could do, we could go asteroid or comet impact. Yeah. More I th- or less likely. I, th- I think I'd, I'd, I'd have to guess AI is more likely than that. What about the sun engulfing us? Um, that feels more likely. You think that's more likely than AI? I think at some point. The sun engulfing us because the sun grows or because like the ozone disappears. Maybe like a supernova burn. type thing. I don't even know what that means. What about this one then? A super volcano eruption. Uh, uh, that happens a lot in movies. Yeah, I, th- I don't. I, th- I think I think AI is more likely to kill us all than that. Climate change. Where do you stand? <laughs> <laughs> I think you know what. I think I'm more concerned about AI than climate change. <laughs> if I had to be honest, at least uh, again it, over time. I don't know. I don't know. Some people could really disagree with. Some that. people are afraid of robots, and I understand yeah. that. I've seen the movies too. But I think as of right now, I feel I've seen a lot of robots do mm-hmm. some pretty unimpressive things. Where I stand now on it, I'm not nervous yet. But I just think AI is different than robots, you know? Like, robots, I'm not that afraid of. AI, like, disabling the internet and then, like, lying to people so that AI can have control. Like, uh, and not even becoming sentient just because of thing, you know, kind of like whatever its directive is gets misinterpreted somehow. You're talking about the movie Eagle Eye. Sure. I don't know. I don't know. You ever seen any guy? Oh, it's a great AI movie. Isn't that with Shia LaBeouf? Yes. Yeah. It's a great AI it didn't, movie. It didn't really stick with me. Oh, it's a good one. You need to, we need to watch that back and then that'll change how you feel yeah. about AI. Yeah. You, you won't trust it so much. Current AI movie recommendations, I might might be more inclined. Of course, iRobot. That yeah, one's since, even older. Since the technology is more, more advanced than it was when Eagle Eye came out. Uh, I don't know. I, you know what? Let me sum it up this way. I think the uh, AI, there's way more uncertainty with it. I think even with climate change, like you just kind of, it's all priced in. AI, there's a, a, any vast range of outcomes with AI. And so that's why 
I rate that as a higher concern, even though it might not be a very high concern. I would take Super Volcano over AI. <laughs> We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio U. Streaming services. A new report from the Wall Street Journal has found that November of last year, customer cancel- cancellations for major streaming platforms rose to 6.3% compared to a year prior where it was only at 5%. That's a meaningful difference. That's a whole percent. That's a whole percent of uh, what, what is a big number overall. So the bigger the number overall, it feels like you have more to lose. But that also means that every percent is bigger. And so when you go up a whole over a percent of year over year of people canceling their subscription services, their, uh, you know, their Netflix, their Amazon Prime Video, their Paramount Plus, and on and on, it's a pretty big deal. And uh, so now the question is, how do these streaming services turn it around? Well, you got to ask yourself first, why is everyone stopping? Why is everyone unsubscribing? Why is everybody canceling? Why would you say that is? It's, I mean, part of it is the price hikes. Mm-hmm. It's got to be the price hikes. And then also... The other part of it is that I think might be a little bit, maybe undersold, mm-hmm. is with some of these services, they're doing the thing where the family plan or the or the subscriptions, you can't, your whole family can't use it, right? You can't share password sharing. And so when I think about password sharing, I think of it as mom and dad pays for it, the whole family uses it, right? Yep. And one thing that they probably don't talk about is the people that are most likely to use it are the kiddos, right? The college kids. Sure, yeah. And maybe mom and dad aren't using it as much. Like if my parents subscribed to Netflix and I was using it Mm -hmm. and I could no longer use it, they would probably unsubscribe because they're not going to use it if I can't. So why would they even have it? I have that very similar situation going on in my family right now where we had been sharing. uh, Yes, granted, across multiple states. uh, Finally caught up to us. Our Netflix passwords. Frauds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and my, my brother had paid for it. Um, but now I feel like my wife might've used it more than anybody. We pay for a different streamers. We pay for max and everybody uses that. I don't know how much they use it, but we pay for it. We want it. We're going to keep that. I don't know that my brother is going to keep Netflix. If everybody else is cut off of it, if half of us aren't able to use it anymore, that had been using it. And so that, uh, for all, for everybody who decides to break down and pay for a Netflix account because they got cut off because of password sharing. There has to be people like us where there was several people subscribed or several people using it. And then the one person that was in charge of paying for it is like, well, if everybody else can't use it, I'm not going to pay for this. And so, because I don't really use it that much anyway. It was more for everybody else. Yeah. That's gotta be a give and take there. It can't just be the people that weren't paying before. There's a reason they weren't paying before. Exactly. (laughs) Using the password. So uh, and the prices just keep going up too. That that's the price hikes. Mm-hmm. And then if you don't want the price to change, you're oftentimes now like this is going on with Amazon Prime Video, where they are now introducing ads unless you decide to pay more. And so it just makes it very difficult. Plus, uh, well, I mean, you know, so you just you can't because the price goes up, you just can't have all of them. It's too much. You gotta just pick one, maybe two. The ones that you really like, but you can't have all of them. And then you think about this too. You think there's, it used to feel like there was so much stuff that was streaming exclusive. And so it was important to have like one, each of and every one of the different streaming services. Doesn't it feel like that's less the case now? Like Netflix is the only one that is really, that puts out their own shows that are only on Netflix. I guess Disney plus too. But generally the rest of the stuff that you want to watch, if you just get a, a, YouTube TV or whatever subscription, then you have access to just about everything you want to watch. And so you don't need all these, all these individual subscriptions too. I think what I've taken away, you need to let us share. If my mom and yeah. dad want to give me the password, uh-huh. I should be able to use That's it. It's their choice. Yes. They don't have to share with me, uh-huh. but if they want to pay for it and share, why can't they share? You go talk to my mom. You ask her. If she yeah. wants to share with me. She wants to share. We can share. Disinformation, mispronunciations, bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is The Riot on Radio U. Uh, This is the video of a bride walking down the aisle. And, uh, you know, her dad is walking down the aisle as per tradition. And then somehow his pants 
fall down and you get like a full a full view of dad pantsless she said to all the brides of 2024 make sure whoever's walking you down the aisle is wearing suspenders so you don't end up like she did or a belt a belt could go a long way too yep it looked like there was no belt going on. I don't even know how this is possible. Yeah, I don't know either. He made it a decent ways he down. He made it all the way. It, it would have been better off had they immediately fallen. Yep. But he makes it all the way down to where he is standing. In front of everybody. In front of everybody. He's made it to the very end of the line. They stop. And for whatever reason, I don't know if he had just got done using the restroom and didn't button him back up or mm, what happened. Could be. Maybe he was nervous. Had too many things to think about. Unbelievable. I think... I guess losing your pants, this isn't something that I've really dealt with, but maybe it's like kind of like uh, going bankrupt. It happens slowly and then suddenly, you know? Slowly and surely those You got to feel them coming down. Yeah. Don't try to feel them. Have you ever That's had your pants just fall down and you were just shocked? That's never happened to me. No, I haven't. I, I don't even know. I, I, I don't know if I've ever had my pants. Fall uh, down. Yeah. You know, it's the such only a time... smooth. This is like this was like as if he was wearing six sizes too big, uh -huh. and he just was holding them the whole time, and they just dropped them. That's how quickly they came down. How's that even possible? Almost like it was, almost like it was planned. But I don't know if you watch. If you watch, you can see him kind of waddling. I don't know if that's just because he. I mean, he's yeah, trying he's, to keep him up. He's, he's keeping a wide. Yeah, I think he's he was keeping trying a to wide keep stance. <laughs> Down the down the aisle, he knew it was wide coming. stance he knew going. It was coming. And then but, he got to the end, and he had to stand up straight. No longer keep him keep his knees out. Yeah, keep that fabric up, and then it all went at he once. He thought he had it. He thought he got a little too a little too confident. He was uh, steps away from his seat too. His seat is three yep. feet to the right. If he just adjusted his hand, you could have obviously the just one arm grabbed. was hooked, but you could have used the other hand pretty covertly, and I think nobody would have been the wiser. Uh, but instead, hey. You know what? Nobody's gonna forget that wedding day. Although it, it is, uh, it is tough. That that's upstaging the bride right there. I don't care what you say. Oh yeah. I mean, when you think back to this wedding, mm -hmm. you won't remember anything but father's pants falling down. Yeah. And the best part too is when you watch the video, right in front of the person who's taking the video of her walking down the aisle is the photographer for the wedding, and she just sl slyly slides into the middle of the aisle photo of dad. Just pants around his ankles. <laughs> that's a good photographer you paid money for. That's right. She saw the opportunity. She took it. That's uh, that's an all-timer. You got you to capture that. that. Yeah. Find more Riot content online. Riot.radiou.com.